I've had a lot of people come into my streams recently asking me my thoughts on the beta for Ghost Recon Breakpoint and I've not been able to give a solid opinion just because I hadn't played much like when everyone was asking. But now that I've played a lot more, I think I'm close to 11 hours of playtime on this beta. I'd like to give a review to basically give you guys a better understanding of my thoughts of this, whether the game's going to be worth buying, and just in general, a basic review of this beta. So we're going to start out with my first couple of hours. I was a bit hasty. I was jumping at things that might have been wrong or not looked so good. But the more I played, the more I got comfortable with the mechanics. And just in general, the game got better with the more I played. As the hours were passing, I was enjoying it even more. I had a couple of people from the stream jump into my game and join me with taking down camps and stuff. In the beta, we were given access to four of the game's regions. I believe there are a total of 20. So we had about 20% of the map, roughly. That's a complete estimate. You get to grips with the free roam and being able to travel wherever you want to. You will have a lot of different things you need to do. You can either go around and do faction missions, which are going to be daily missions in the game. They will also give you battle points, which works towards a tier system similar to a battle pass. And you can eventually, when you start getting to the higher tiers, unlock some really nice bits, like different skins for your bikes. You can get these crates. And I'm not entirely sure what else the battle tier, whatever you want to call it, I'm not sure what that is going to feature. But as long as there's not a microtransaction so you can purchase tiers, I think that's a great addition to the game. Alongside faction missions, you have like main story missions, there's like side missions and things you can do. There are separate camps, there's behemoth defense areas where there's tanks that are defending them. And just in general, like if you feel there's nothing to do, look on the map, there will always be something popping up. Even if it's an objective to go and get a blueprint for a new gun, or a blueprint, or even the actual attachment itself for a weapon. So there is a bunch of different things you can do. That's just the PvE side. There's going to be PvP and stuff as well. The gameplay itself, the gunplay is spot on. It feels like an improvement from Wildlands. Although I haven't played much of Wildlands myself, I did play a couple of hours and the gunplay does feel better. It feels improved. The graphics aren't the greatest, but you need to remember this is a review on the beta. The full release could completely change. We don't know yet. And we won't know until October the 4th. The animations are a little bit on the... I wouldn't say they feel rushed, but they don't feel as though max effort was put into them. For an example, one of the animations, like when you're running, it looks like your character just wants to drop a couple of turds on his way. When you are patching yourself up from a minor injury, you start wrapping your hands around your leg to place bandage, and the bandage just appears on your leg. I think they pretty much nailed it with the diving animation from where you go from running just instantly to prone. I think that's quite cool. And just in general, I think some of the animations need working on. The driving isn't the best mechanic in the world. I know driving isn't a big thing in this game. But I feel the handling of the vehicles could be improved a little bit. And just in general, like the mechanic, if you fall a little bit off a cliff or something, like it doesn't feel as though there's any variety in it or anything like that it just feels very clunky with the driving the tactical side of things i would like to see an option to toggle auto cover in the full release i'm getting used to it it's performing better for me like i'm understanding the mechanic better and stuff but if there's just an option to toggle it because the auto cover at times can be irritating if you don't need to cover and you stand too close to a wall or something as you're trying to ascend the flight of stairs then it's going to cover you against the wall and sometimes you can get stuck. I found out through someone in my stream chat that you can actually stop it auto switching shoulders. There is an option to stop that happening, which was an absolute game changer for me. It was irritating going into cover, looking to the right, and you would pop out of cover looking over your right shoulder and then it happened the other side. So if you went into cover, you was walking left to the left side of a building, you come out of cover, you would be looking over your left shoulder. I feel more comfortable playing games looking over my right shoulder and there is an option to turn that off so that is amazing. The bugs in the beta, the only thing that I've really come across in terms of bugs is there was a light and bug in the rebel base like the social hub. That for some reason today when I was playing it hasn't been like it doesn't exist. I think they fixed it, they've done a couple of maintenance patches for this beta which I also think is amazing. Because if they can patch a beta so quick, then they'll be able to patch the full game with other things. So everything should be running smoothly. The lighting bug disappeared. There was one in the social hub. Not sure if that's affecting other people still. 
For some reason, as I was trying to traverse a mountain to get up to a behemoth defense area, my guy was literally just climbing and walking and I made it a very, very steep, like vertical mountain. I was able to just walk up it. So maybe they need to, like the animations were all messing up because it shouldn't have been working how it was. But maybe they need to put like, uh, depending on how vertical a mountain is, you can't actually climb it and things like that. So maybe part of that needs working on as well. And also when I was flying my gunship because I managed to get hold of one, Every time it would spawn at a bivouac or just in general, if I hit a tree, as soon as I hit it, the blades would like disappear. And I don't feel that should be happening. Like there's basically no durability in the blades on the gunship. The other choppers and stuff, they work fine. You can crash into a lot of trees. You will still be able to fly it. But literally one clip into a tree with a gunship and the blades are gone. It's not difficult to spawn it back in. You read that like you fast travel back to a bivouac. You deploy the bivouac. You go into the menu. You spawn the vehicle again and it's just redeployed. So it's not a massive problem. But there was a bivouac. I can't remember where it was on the map. I spawned the chopper in and as you enter the chopper it starts firing up the blades so that you're ready to take off. Whilst it was spinning the blades to get them ready. They were hitting like they were clipping onto a tree. So... I couldn't even take off with my gunship from one of the bivouacs. So maybe, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the the spawning of the vehicles because they've done really well with the placement of where the vehicles are spawned from each bivouac. I think it's maybe that there are too many trees around the bivouacs in certain areas and I know it's supposed to be a safe location in the middle of the forest or something like that. But just in the immediate area of the spawns for vehicles, I think they should try and remove some of the trees or do something like that to fix it up so that when you spawn your gunship, it's not instantly destroyed. There are multiple ways you can play this game. You can run and gun, you can play it stealthy. Your drone's battery, I don't know if this is just a beta thing, but my, the battery on my drone lasted forever, and the range, I think I got it up to like 900 meters. I did max out the upgrades on the drone, but I don't think that has too many range sort of upgrades. So 900 meters is amazing. If you've got a big camp or something like that, and you need to do some recon that is going to be extremely helpful. But the, the drone work, it spots enemies. It, it does what it says on the tin. Like it's a recon drone. It will mark your enemies so you know where they are. Sometimes it can be a little bit irritating if there's an enemy inside a building. You won't actually be able to mark them, which is a good thing. So you could look for maybe doors on like warehouses and stuff that you can enter, which will increase your risk of being spotted. But if not, then there will be a couple of like red circles on your minimap to say there's still enemies you haven't marked. But the drone does its job. The stealth play, the tacticalness, like how tactical you can be with your moves and stuff like that. They've got it spot on. It's a massive upgrade, especially from the tech tests. And as the beta has progressed, they've done a couple of maintenance patches and things seem to be running a lot smoother. Not only that, but there are certain things I found out at the end of my streaming for this beta. We were capped to 40 for our gear score from standard enemies and stuff. Then you get wolves, which are the badass enemies. You have to have a high gear score. Like, that's recommended. We took them down, and you can actually pass the 40 gear score cap. So there could be some secret stuff you can do in the game, which will give you higher gear score and things like that. I think with the loot, the guns... They've done an amazing job on that. You get like your standard white, green and blue through the beta. I didn't see any other colours or anything. But you pick up a, a white drop, a, like a white coloured weapon drop or something off an enemy or out of a crate. And it's going to have a gear score. It's going to be like standard basic stuff. You get a green that might come with one sort of like perk to it. So you might get like a 2% health regen speed or something like that. Then the blues, they give you two. So on a 416 and assault rifle, you could possibly get like 10 mobility and minus 10% reload speed or something like that. Some range, some accuracy. I really like what they've done with the looting system. The RNG is good. Like you get high drops and stuff. You get a variety of weapons and they come with like different, basically like talents, kind of bonus stats, perks, whatever you want to call them. And then the final thing I'm going to talk about in this review, it's been a quite a long one, but I wanted to go in depth about how I'm feeling about the beta. I'm really looking forward to the game. As I said, the more I played, the more I enjoyed it. One of the things I really, really like about this game is that a lot of games with looter shooter elements, so you can get the different rarities and stuff. If you find something you really like the look of and it's 
like let's use a 450 gear score as an example you absolutely love the look of that item on your character then you go and find something that's not even necessarily a higher or a lower gear score but you know for your build that is going to be more beneficial you equip that then you've basically lost the appearance your character wears the new piece of clothing or whatever on this game let's use ghillie trousers as an example if you have some ghillie trousers you really like the look of them you equip them on your character and that's at a 34 gear score then you go and find a 40 drop that's just a pair of jeans what you can do is when you pick up a piece of gear and you unlock that item you can go into your customization for your appearance you can go into the trousers and you can equip the ghillie trousers as a visual skin so it won't affect your stats it won't affect your gear score it will literally just change how your character looks so you can still have the ghillie trousers on your character even though you're wearing jeans that have better stats. That is such an amazing addition to a looter shooter. I wish more games had that feature. And not only that, you have different dyes and stuff. Like you could make, I ended up making what we call the tactical cowboy, the tactical combat cowboy. I had jeans on that I painted brown. I had boots on that I painted brown. Everything was brown. I had a cowboy hat, everything like that. You can take your chest off, you can take your backpack off. You can literally customise your character to look how you want them to look. There's different skins, like you can have solid red, solid black, solid blue. Then you can have different like checkered patterns and stuff that you can paint all your different items with. So even though I was a little bit sceptical of my thoughts and stuff at the start of playing this beta, the more I played, the more I'm thinking this is definitely going to be a game that's worth picking up. When I play a beta, I normally play it once or twice for a few hours, and then that's it. But I started up a stream. I said we were going to wreak havoc in Aurora with the gunship. I got hold of the gunship after a couple of hours, and just every time I looked at my map, there was always something different I could do. So to answer the question, yes, I think this game is worth picking up. Yes, I think this is probably more than likely going to steal a lot of Division 2's fan base because I know a lot of people have come from Division 2 over like they're watching my channel because of that game they're watching me play Breakpoint and they're wondering how does Breakpoint fare up against Division 2 I think a lot of players will move from Div 2 over to Breakpoint just because it's something new it's something fresh there's different loot and stuff like that there's PvP which is I'm going to say it's done properly I believe there's going to be different modes and stuff. I'm not 100% sure on the PvP side of things. PvP wasn't available during the beta. I'm not a big PvP player myself. But it does seem as though because the game as a whole in general feels better than Division 2 did during betas and stuff. I think as long as the full game is literally just improvements on that, the PvP and PvE will beat Division 2. Massive entertainment are taking forever to do anything with that game. And I know there's a lot of hardcore fans have probably got some dislikes for saying that. Oh, Division 2 is not the best game. whoop de doo who would have guessed? But I'm not saying Division 2 is terrible, not in any way, shape or form. I do love playing that game. There's just no content for me to cover at the moment, so there's no point in me loading that game up. If the developers ever get around to adding stuff, I will always be willing to go back to the game because I enjoy the game in general. But Breakpoint, as I said, something fresh, something new, looter shooter, tactical, actually like stealthy tactical, the customization, the gunplay, it's all spot on. Even with snipers, like I don't know if it's snipers actually, I think it is, but even with like DMRs, you can click in your right stick so that you don't have to actually scope. You can fire most, if not all, of the weapons from the shoulder. So as always, let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. If there's anything that you wanted cleared up that I haven't answered, also let me know and I will help you out to the best I can. That's it for me and Breakpoint until the full release on October the 4th. So I will see you then. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.